while Canada's relative lack of competition can cause problems. For example, simple issues around medication errors uh, and uh, with the pace uh, and, and change that, in fact, those probably did occur more frequently. Uh, and I don't think they were reported with the uh, same degree of enthusiasm uh, than they might have been. It was only after American studies showed that medical errors caused tens of thousands of deaths every year that anyone in Canada even asked about medical error rates and discovered that their system had hidden the problem by keeping no real records. A report issued earlier this year said almost half of Canada's health care organizations felt that, quote, they could not effectively enhance patient safety. One reason, the report concluded, is the Canadian bureaucracy frightens doctors into silence about mistakes. I'm sure there are situations in which that's true. Medical errors tend to be suppressed because people either don't think they're important or they're embarrassed or they're worried about prosecution. Um, so that is starting to evolve more in Canada, and I think you'll see more openness. A new National Patient Safety Institute is expected to recommend new Canadian policies within a year. But meanwhile, no one knows how bad the medical error problem really is. Of all the differences between the American and Canadian health care systems, perhaps the most significant one is this. The Canadians admit their failures and are willing to use American techniques and technologies to fix them. On the American side, there seems little inclination to adapt any of the strengths of the Canadian system, while the major failure of the American system, the 43 million people with no health insurance coverage at all, is only expected to worsen. I'm Dave Marish for Nightline in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. What lessons can the U.S. healthcare system take from the Canadian example, or from anywhere else for that matter? That conversation when we come back. And joining me now, ABC News medical editor, Dr. Tim Johnson. Tim, I swear I was neither the smartest nor the dumbest kid in the class, but when we start talking about different medical systems, different healthcare systems, mine eyes glaze over. Can you make it simple? How do we fix ours? Well, let me say, first of all, that all industrialized countries, ourselves in Canada and all other countries of that sort, are going to have a hard problem doing everything for everyone at every age that modern medical science can dream up, which means we're all going to have to make some hard choices. What Canada has done, as we've just seen, is to simplify the financing system. They've cut out a lot of the paperwork, they've cut out a lot of the overhead, and in so doing have saved money that they can apply directly to health care. But, the but they don't spend enough, do they? No, uh, I was just about to say, on the other hand, most experts I've talked to say they've actually underfunded their system and they need to spend more money. So the one thing I can say for sure is that the United States can no longer afford to arrogantly dismiss other countries like Canada and say, as you said in the intro, we've got the best. We've got a lot to learn from other countries and one of the things we've got to learn from Canada is we can do better on the financing system. We can make it simpler and much lower in cost. Well, let's take the other half of the equation, Tim, because just as the Canadians are spending too little, we clearly are spending too much because we spend more money on a per capita basis than any other country in the world. In that area, we are first when it comes to spending money on medical care. But there are those Canadians saying, 96% of them saying, you want to have the U.S. system? No, thank you very much, they say. We'll take ours. So we're clearly overspending and not getting the bang for the buck. Why? Because so much of our money goes to the far high technology end of the spectrum of health care, uh, where the rich can afford it, where those with good insurance can have it, and too little goes to the other side of the spectrum, and that's why we see that we lag behind other countries in terms of major indices such as immunizations, infant mortality, life expectancy. We take very good care of those who can afford it and we are far behind other industrialized countries and those who cannot afford it. Are we really far behind when it, I mean, it, when you say we're behind in infant mortality, that's a shocker. Right. We're not that far behind, but when we spend twice as much per person as every other industrialized country, we should be number one. Uh, so we've got real system problems in this country. We have decided that the marketplace the competition in the marketplace is the answer, but it hasn't worked out that well. We need to have some federal government involvement, not in delivering health care, that would be a disaster, but in guaranteeing and providing guidelines to make sure that all of our citizens will have access 